Who are the soldiers who arrested Jesus? Some claim that the Bible contradicts itself. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it was a mob or a crowd that came to arrest Jesus, and yet by the book of John, it seems like it's a troop of Roman soldiers. Or at least this is what some teachers teach. I believe this is actually incorrect. I believe that these soldiers weren't actually Roman at all. So then, who were they? Next on Laver. In John 18, 12, we're told a band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. Many folks make the leap to these soldiers being Roman soldiers, which of course makes sense, or it seems to make sense, because Israel was occupied by Rome at the time. Some even go farther to say that this was a Roman cohort meaning about 200 to 600 Roman soldiers came to arrest Jesus. Yet, in the other Gospels, we're told this was a crowd or a mob. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. If we continue reading, notice Matthew 26, 57. And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled." Now, the first thing that should give us pause is the notion of Roman soldiers doing the bidding of Jewish high priests. Likely? Definitely not. To the Romans, the Jews were a subjugated people. Roman soldiers were certainly not in the practice of answering the beck and call of Jews. As we see in Matthew, Rome would not be pulled into this drama until the morning after Jesus' visit to Caiaphas' palace, Matthew 27. Notice, nowhere in John 18 does it even mention Roman soldiers. Earlier in verse 3, we're actually told, Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. This is most certainly the Jewish temple guard established in the Old Testament way back in 1 Chronicles 26. We already caught a glimpse of them in John 7:32. The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him, that is, Jesus, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. We see the temple guard again in John 7, 45-46, where the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. Why did the soldiers fall when Jesus said, I am he? I believe the soldiers' identity as the temple guard is further proven by their response to Jesus as he uses the name of God in reference to himself in John 18, Verse 6, Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. This same fall to the ground adverb only appears two other times in Scripture. First, in Job 1.20, where Job falls to the ground in worship, and again in Daniel 2.46, where Nebuchadnezzar falls to the ground before Daniel. Here, Jesus uses the Hebrew reference I am, indicating the name Yahweh, the name of the God of the Jews. This name is not used lightly, and the officers dedicated to temple service, they would have had a proper reverence for this name. Roman soldiers, accustomed to worshiping a variety of gods, none of which included the God of the Jews, would not have had this response. Were Roman soldiers guarding Jesus' tomb? In Matthew 27, 62 through 66, we see the chief priests and Pharisees coming to Pilate to ask him to place guards over Jesus' tomb so Jesus' followers can't steal his body away and perpetuate a resurrection myth. In verse 65, Pilate says to them, You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. So is this an image of Pilate agreeing to place a Roman watch over a Jewish tomb? 
Or is this simply Pilate telling the Jewish leaders to use their own temple guard to watch over this tomb that they are so concerned about? I believe this is the latter. And again, like my example of Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, I think the behavior of the soldiers indicates their origin. In Matthew 28, we have an earthquake. We have an angel of God, full of the glory of God, announcing Jesus' resurrection. And we have an empty tomb. Suffice it to say, the guards watching over the tomb were freaked out. Do they run to Pilate? No! They run to the chief priests, where they are paid to participate in a cover story. Verse 14 says, if this report gets to the governor, Pilate. So we can probably be safe in assuming these guards did not have any direct report to Rome. I believe these were members of the temple guard, giving credit where credit is due. Well, you know, I'm not sure how it is that Roman soldiers came to be given all this credit leading up to Jesus being handed over to Rome and then, again, more credit after. Maybe it's because once Jesus was handed over, it was the Roman soldiers who scourged him, escorted him to Golgotha, and crucified our Lord there. In this talk, I have made the case for the Jewish temple guard being more instrumental than maybe they have historically been credited. I believe they were employed the night of Jesus' arrest, just as they had already been charged once to do, and I believe it was the temple guard, not Roman soldiers, who were watching over the tomb when Jesus raised from the dead. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Remember, it is the truth that sets you free.